This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. ...developed a happy quality that became the hallmark of her young life. Sarah gained more and more weight as each month progressed, and slowly but surely, the underweight baby turned into a healthy, athletic girl, as her mother had been. Running around the house, getting into mischief, but basically a good, happy child. Sarah was a bundle of energy. Two years later, Sarah was presented with a baby brother, whom Larry and Tina named Cody. And just like his sister, Cody was also born tiny and premature. But once again, just like Sarah, Cody soon developed into a happy, healthy baby. In no time, he too was a burst of energy, crawling all over the house like a little dynamo. Larry said, he turned into a real live wire, just like his sister. Sarah doted on her baby brother. There was a real bond between those two. I was real proud of both my kids. They were also very kind, and they always shared with others. I don't even know how much of that was learned. It was just who they were. Larry's mother, Esther, recalled that Sarah and Cody both loved bicycles. We started out with little ones and worked our way up to big kids' bikes. I would watch them ride their bikes up and down the sidewalk until they got tired. They were so happy. I always tried to make sure they knew how much I loved them. Now, with a growing family, there was even more pressure on Larry and Tina to provide a good life for them. Because neither Larry or Tina had college education, the prospect of good-paying jobs was limited. Larry looked around and discovered that one of the best-paying jobs within his grasp was becoming a long-haul truck driver. The work suited him. He wanted to drive a large truck since he was five years old, when he'd sat in the cab of a relative's truck and imagined how it would be to be behind the wheel of such a large vehicle. Larry knew that he could make a good long-haul truck driver, but he also knew the job would be a double-edged sword. Even though the money was good, it would take him away from Tina and the kids for extended periods of time. At the kids' young age, they would be changing all the time, and Larry wouldn't be able to see those changes for weeks at a time. Larry recalled, I began trucking all over America, mainly because I wanted Sarah and Cody to have a nice home. The company was based in Florida, and I would haul roses and other plants to mom-and-pop florist shops all over the eastern states. I'd also drive out to California and other western states. There were times I wouldn't be home for six to eight weeks because I'd be driving a load to some place and then picking up another load there. That way, I wouldn't be driving empty trailers on a return trip. All of this put a lot of stress on me and Tina. She was working, too, at a Myers grocery store by that time and also having to raise the kids a lot on her own. It got to be like Tina and I were passing by each other right in our own home. I'd be there for just a little while and then back on the road again. Even when I was home, I was pretty tired. It was like Tina and I were becoming strangers to each other. Tina and the kids lived with Larry's grandmother in a nice house in the township of Hamilton, south of Columbus. It was a pretty suburban area, surrounded by fields and orchards. The locale had a small-town feel to it, much as Reynoldsburg had. From Ohio to New York to Florida, from Ohio to California and Washington State, Larry's trucking took him on multi-week runs. He began to know the inside of his truck cab better than he did his own home. There were still good times with the family, trips to the Columbus Zoo, rides for the kids at amusement parks and barbecues, but these times were like islands in an ocean. Cracks started developing in the relationship between Larry and Tina, and as time went on, they became wider and wider. Tina wanted a man who was there to help her raise Sarah and Cody. She felt frustrated and lonely. For his part, Larry wanted to provide for Tina and their two kids, but had to be on the road in order to do so. The arguments between Larry and Tina became cyclical and seemed unsolvable, and they were inexorably drifting apart. Finally, 
the rift was too large to patch any longer. In anger and frustration, Tina moved out of the house with Sarah and Cody. Larry was devastated.